something actually from this. Uh, Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being with us. The Secretary General and the President will deliver short statements and then take a few of your questions. Secretary General. President Poroshenko, there, uh, Petro, it's good to have you back at the NATO headquarters. It's uh, great to see you again. We uh, just met uh, in uh, New York uh, in connection with the UN General Assembly in September, and then we met in Warsaw uh, in July, and I think that uh, uh, the high frequency of our meetings uh, reflects the very close cooperation and partnership between NATO and Ukraine. So it's great to see you again and I uh, really appreciate uh, uh, this opportunity to once again to address uh, the very important issues of uh, uh, the situation in uh, Ukraine and how NATO can uh, continue to provide uh, support to Ukraine. And the Ukraine crisis continues to be a black mark on the map of uh, Europe. We know that uh, thousands of people have been killed and many, many injured. And NATO uh, support uh, for uh, Ukraine is unwavering. We will continue to support the territorial integrity and the sovereignty of Ukraine. And we do not and we will not recognize Russia's illegal annexation of Crimea. And uh, we are very much concerned about Russia's continued destabilization of eastern uh, Ukraine. For months, the full implementation of the peace deal has stalled. That is why I welcome uh, that you had a meeting uh, yesterday in the Normandy uh, format uh, in uh, Berlin. And I thank you for updating me on the outcome of uh, that meeting and, this, and the discussions you just uh, had. Including the plan uh, to uh, create a new roadmap for implementing the Minsk agreement. And it is essential to implement the Minsk Agreement uh, because the Minsk Agreement is the only viable way to a lasting, uh, peaceful uh, solution to the crisis uh, in eastern uh, Ukraine. All parties must uh, fully implement the Minsk Agreement. Ukraine has responsibilities to implement its uh, commitments, but Russia has a significant responsibility in this regard because it continues to support the separatists and uh, we know that the OSCE monitors uh, must uh, have safe access to the whole territory to be able to implement uh, the agreement and we have seen that they have been hindered in doing that several times. And we've also seen that threats against the monitors and jamming of the UAVs uh, are undermining the implementation of the Minsk Agreement and these uh, uh, actions are unacceptable because they are in uh, total violation of the uh, Minsk Agreement. Cease viola violations must end and uh, uh, we cannot allow uh, that these cease vi violations uh, are becoming the new normal in uh, Ukraine. NATO and NATO allies will continue to uh, support Ukraine. We will provide practical support. We will provide political uh, support. We will uh, provide support uh, through our different trust funds, helping you with build uh, security institutions. And we will work on areas like, for instance, cyber defense and uh, rehabilitation of wounded soldiers and in other areas to help and support uh, Ukraine in a different practical ways. Ukraine, for its part, uh, has to continue to implement reforms, uh, fight uh, corruption, and I welcome uh, your personal engagement in pursuing uh, the path of reforms in uh, Ukraine. So, uh, uh, once again, it has been a great pleasure to meet with you, uh, but let me also add that we in addition to the situation in Ukraine, we also addressed uh, the very serious situation in Syria. Uh, because also in Syria we see uh, a Russian presence uh, and uh, we have seen a substantial uh, military build-up of Russia in uh, Syria. And uh, I welcome the temporary uh, ceasefire in Aleppo, but this does not uh, go nearly far enough. 
following weeks of Syrian and Russian strikes against civilian infrastructure, including hospitals, the humanitarian uh, situation in Aleppo is appalling. We need a real solution on the ground in Aleppo, uh, not a short-lived ceasefire, but one that addresses the desperate humanitarian crisis and which will lead to a credible cessation of hostilities. And therefore, I join the international uh, community on, in its calls uh, on Russia to help end the bloodshed, uh, bloodshed in uh, Aleppo and to play a constructive role in finding a negotiated solution to uh, the crisis. So once again, uh, Petro, it's always a great pleasure to have you here and uh, good to have you back in, at the NATO headquarters. So welcome. Thank you very much indeed, dear Secretary General, dear Jens. That's a real great pleasure uh, for me to be here today, uh, together with our very important and reliable, reliable partner, NATO. And I was really glad to meet with you, my colleague, my good friend, and very good friend of Ukraine. We have continued the comprehensive and trustful exchange of opinions on the situation uh, in Ukraine, security situation in Ukraine, connected with the Russian aggression against sovereign and independent country Ukraine. And uh, that's true. In particular, I brief very detailed the recent escalation, uh, the situation about the recent escalation on the security situation on the Donbas. I informed about yesterday meeting in the Normandy format because we have a very long discussion. Instead of two hours, we have almost seven hours discussion. And uh, most of the part, significant part of this discussion uh, was dedicated to the security situation. Once again, Ukraine remained committed with, to the Minsk agreements, all the Minsk agreements. It is specially stressed. Uh, during yesterday's discussion, and it's ready to implement its part of the commitments, but not on the, at the expense of the Ukrainian interest. We insist that now, extremely urgent to implement the whole security package, including the immediate and comprehensive ceasefire, including the uninterrupted access to the special monitoring mission of OEC, both to the touchline, to the sealed storage, to the uncontrolled part of Ukrainian-Russian border, and to the whole occupied territory. And to move forward with the political process, we need to see real deliverables on the security trap that means that the first place establishing lasting and comprehensive situation with the security. Uh, that is why Ukraine uh, proposed the comprehensive roadmap uh, with the two main principles, principle of the sequence and principle of the guarantees. We were very much uh, satisfied that this principle was strongly supported by our, by our German and French partners, and today that was put in the agenda as absolutely uh, necessary step to create uh, based on the principle which we uh, discussed and confirmed yesterday, the comprehensive road map of the implementation of the Minsk process, which would properly interlink steps on security and political structures, and we believe that this is the only way to ensure the progress of the implementation of Minsk agreement. I am grateful to the Secretary General Stoltenberg for his firm solidarity with Ukraine and support our vision for further settlement progress. We hope that our NATO partners will help to pursue Russian side to ensure a meaningful implementation of the Minsk agreement in the first instance, the security part. Today we have also discussed the possibility for further enhancement of Ukraine-NATO cooperation and I'm grateful to NATO for its ever-growing support for Ukraine defense capability, building and reform 
our NGO support, advisory support, technical support to reform our security and defence sector. This is very important now for us and we are satisfied very much with our cooperation. We are practically grateful for the unprecedented of its scope NATO comprehensive assistance package for Ukraine, uh, which provide uh, important assistance tied to specific need of Ukraine in implementing reform of defense sector. And I fully share the position that the best response to the NATO, to the uh, of best response of NATO to the Russian aggression is the powerful Ukraine effective reform to help my country to achieve NATO standards. This is exactly what we are doing in my country. And that is why we have decided to change our approach on the implementation of the annual national program of Ukraine, NATO cooperation, ANP. And now, as of next year, the ANP will not longer be a simple list of NATO Ukraine activities, but rather it would be a reform program in order to achieve NATO standards. And we will also create a synergy between the above-mentioned reform and all assistance and support measures provided by NATO in Ukraine. And I want to once again stress that it is extremely important for me as a president and as a commander-in-chief of Ukrainian armed forces. And as of next year, all NATO assistance will be directly connected to the reform task and uh, the benchmark for the achieving tangible results of this reform remain the same, 2020. And this is mentioned in our Strategic Defense Bulletin. This is the roadmap of Ukrainian reform of security and defense sector. And this is fixed in our national security strategy of Ukraine. No less important, it's deepening Ukraine-NATO cooperation in strengthening regional security and countering security challenges created by the Russian aggression. And in this context, we have shared the opinion necessity of the increasing mutual situational awareness and interoperability of armed forces. This is the new format of the cooperation on the so-called uh, NATO and Hest Opportunity Program. And today we have agreed uh, the, uh, analyzing the possibility of cooperation in this field. I would like also once again express, express my gratitude to the NATO and uh, to the Secretary General Stoltenberg personally for their very strong and unwavering support for Ukraine in its fight against Russian aggression. The alliance solidarity with Ukraine is of utmost importance for us. Thank you very much indeed, Jens, for that. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll start with Union. Uh, very good afternoon. Uh, News Agency Union Ukrainian Irina Sommer. Question for uh, Secretary General. Secretary General, in the light of yesterday negotiation in the Normandy format, do you see a possibility or use to hold next NATO Russia Council to discuss this issue also with Russian side? And question for Ukrainian President in Ukrainian language, if I may. Пане Президенте, а якими є ваші головні висновки з візиту до Нідерландів? Я маю на увазі Мастріх і до Брюсселю. Дякую. After the illegal annexation of uh, Crimea uh, in uh, the spring of 2014, uh, NATO decided to suspend all practical cooperation uh, with Russia. And that decision still uh, stands. Uh, we have also implemented the biggest reinforcement of our collective defense uh, since the illegal annexation of Crimea as a direct response to the aggressive actions of, uh, of Russia against uh, Ukraine. But we also decided to uh, maintain channels for political dialogue uh, open uh, because we do not believe that uh, we should try to isolate uh, Russia. We believe that we should combine uh, military strength, uh, defense and deterrence with the political uh, dialogue. And therefore we have um, uh, maintained the NATO-Russia Council uh, as a platform, as a channel for uh, political engagement with uh, Russia. Uh, we have also made it very clear that we will uh, raise the question of Ukraine uh, and therefore we have had Ukraine on the agenda on all 
the meetings of the NATO Russia uh, Council since uh, the spring of 2014. Uh, we had a meeting in July uh, where we discussed Russia, uh, sorry, where we discussed uh, Ukraine uh, in the NATO Russia Council. And uh, NATO allies strongly uh, expressed the full support for Ukraine, uh, the full support for the uh, sovereignty and the territorial in the integrity. And we also made it very clear that we do not recognize the illegal annexation of uh, Crimea. We are ready to have a new uh, meeting of the NATO-Russia Council in the near future. Uh, there is no date that has been uh, fixed or decided, but we are ready to, to, to convene uh, in, a new meeting and we are in dialogue with Russia on the agenda and on the modalities. But what is clear is that uh, uh, in, a, uh, in the next meeting of the NATO-Russia Council, we will also raise the question of Ukraine and once again underline both uh, our support for uh, Ukraine, but also underline the importance of the full implementation of the Minsk agreements, and also now uh, support the, uh, the uh, initiative to try to establish a roadmap uh, to implement the Minsk agreements. So we believe uh, in political dialogue, uh, because we think it's important to convey clear messages on many issues, and also on, on Ukraine, of course. Дуже дякую за це запитання. Я думаю, що сьогодні у нас у нашій делегації була дуже інтенсивна програма, зважаючи на те, що ми делегація прилетіла біля третьої ночі після завершення переговорів в нормандському форматі. Уже сьогодні о восьмій годині ранку була зустріч з президентом Європейського парламенту, де ми обговорювали необхідність прискорення прийняття рішень Європейським парламентом як в частині безвізового режиму, так і в частині підтримки торгових преференцій в рамках поглибленої та всеохоплюючої зони вільної торгівлі, яку Європейська комісія запропонувала Україні. Ви, думаю, бачили реакцію президента Європарламенту. Ми чітко наголошуємо на тому, що Україна має тверду підтримку значної більшості депутатів Європарламенту. І на сьогоднішній день, одразу ж після вирішення суспеншн-механізму, механізму призупинки безвізового режиму, ми не маємо жодного сумніву, що це рішення буде негайно прийнято. І я мав можливість в цьому переконатися під час зустрічі на саміті Європейської народної партії, де і президент Єврокомісії Жан-Клод Юнкер, і президент Європейської ради Дональд Туск, і керівники країн-членів, включаючи і Ангелу Меркель, і багатьох інших, твердо наголосили на тому, що треба прискорювати надання безвізового режиму, треба підтримати Україну в завершенні процесу ратифікації, треба забезпечити необхідні торгові преференції. І те, що ми сьогодні бачили в Мастріхті, а це символічне місто, місто, з якого 25 років почався фінансовий союз, місце, де сьогодні є символом європейської інтеграції. Я перше був в цьому залі, де були підписані ці історичні документи, і сьогодні я відчув абсолютно тверду і надійну підтримку Європейського Союзу в наших прагненнях по виконанню тих програм, про які ми обговорювали. І кількість зустрічей сьогодні було більше десяти зустріч з главами держав та урядів, і всі вони наголошують на тому, що в умовах, коли Росія продемонструвала абсолютно безвідповідальну поведінку в Алєпо, в Сірії. Завтрашнє обговорення і сьогоднішнє, вибачте, обговорення на Європейській Раді питання Росії є абсолютно твердою позицією Європейського Союзу щодо забезпечення підтримки України в захисті її суверенітету, територіальної цілісності і незалежності. Thank you. We'll go next to Reuters, please. Thanks, Dylan. Robin Emmett from Reuters. Secretary General, a question on Syria. We see that um, diplomatically Russia is making efforts um, to talk, but at the same time it's sending 
warships uh, through the English Channel to the Eastern Mediterranean, and some have suggested that this is for a final assault on Aleppo. What do you make of this? Um, what we have seen is that uh, uh, there has been many attacks on civilians and civilian infrastructure in uh, Aleppo, and I welcome that we now have a temporary ceasefire, but that's uh, in no way enough. We need a lasting uh, ceasefire, and which is fully uh, respected. When it comes to the Russian uh, carrier group, uh, which is on its way to the Mediterranean, uh, it is important to underline that uh, Russia, of course, has the right to operate in international uh, waters. And this is not the first time we have seen this carrier group being deployed to the Mediterranean. That has happened several times before. But what uh, creates concern now is that uh, uh, this carrier group may be used uh, to contribute to military operations over Syria and uh, uh, be used to uh, increase attacks uh, on Aleppo. And that's something very different than uh, to deploy a carrier group to the Mediterranean as part of a normal uh, deployment, which we have seen uh, before. Uh, so uh, we are concerned that the Russian carrier group will support military operations uh, in Syria in ways which will increase uh, humanitarian uh, and human uh, suffering. And that's why we are concerned about this uh, deployment. Uh, NATO navies will, uh, uh, in normal way, monitor uh, the Russian ships uh, as they approach the Mediterranean. Uh, they will do so in a responsible and measured way, as they always uh, do, uh, because this is part of uh, uh, the way we are following Russian military activities. So. It's not unnormal uh, that we see deployment of Russian carrier groups in the Mediterranean, but what is unnormal is that this carrier group can uh, be part of a combat operation, air strikes against uh, uh, Aleppo, and that is the reason why we are uh, concerned. Thank you. We have time for just one more. Ruda, please. Yeah. Uh, Ruda, Media Network. Um, one question for President uh, Poroshenko. Um, Mr. President Poroshenko, do you believe that the new roadmap that you decided in Berlin uh, on the level of foreign minister can help you uh, to implement the Minsk agreement? Uh, and how could be that uh, new roadmap uh, until November? Do you believe that is the enough time for it? And then question for uh, Secretary General Stoltenberg. Um, you mentioned the, um, the war in, in Syria in Ukraine, um, you know that uh, now is uh, the operation of Mosul. Um, how you see the, uh, the participation of the member state of, of NATO in this operation and now the uh, Peshmerga, the Kurdish forces, fought and they, uh, the, uh, today there are many killed and they, there is no enough airstrike of the member state of uh, NATO. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. I think that without roadmap it's impossible to implement that because the roadmap should demonstrate the uh, sequence and responsibility of those who do not implement in the Minsk agreement. And if we agreed that it's necessary to provide the comprehensive ceasefire, that would be a responsible person who don't do that, it would be fixed by the OEC. If we agreed to provide the uninterrupted access for the uh, OEC inspector and they will block, that would be the responsibility in the whole world. We will see who is responsible for that and it would be done immediately now. If we told about the uh, providing, for example, the uh, armed uh, OEC mission, police mission, which was agreed and this is another result of the uh, the Normandy format. This is very important. And uh, the, by the way, I want to stress that it would be a meeting on the level of ministers. That would be just a preparation work because this roadmap should be approved on the summit of the uh, of the Normandy format. And 
you will see that you you see now that we don't have this meeting from October last year, from the last meeting in Paris, and Ukraine pay a huge price during this year for not implemented uh, Minsk agreement by Russia. This is the hundreds of Ukrainian soldiers and Ukrainian civilian was killed by Russian occupational troops. And with that situation, we think that the, if we demonstrate the readiness to, dem to put to the public documents as a roadmap with a practical date on each step, that certainly help us to uh, go further to demonstrate the progress for return Ukrainian sovereignty on the occupied territory by Russia. And uh, I think that the unique solidarity and unity the uh, world, the European Union, our American, Canadian uh, partner throughout the world demonstrate this is also another very important reason uh, for optimism for the implementation of Minsk. All NATO allies and uh, NATO uh, support the international coalition to counter uh, ISIL. And we do so because we uh, see that ISIL is responsible for atrocities, they are responsible for terrorist attacks, and they are responsible for killing uh, thousands of civilians uh, in Iraq, in Syria, but also uh, they have been responsible for terrorist attacks in our own uh, streets here in uh, Europe. Uh, and NATO provides uh, direct support to the coalition uh, fighting uh, ISIL. And uh, uh, last week uh, we had a meeting here at NATO with, uh, with Brett McKirk, uh, the uh, presidential envoy uh, uh, in, to the uh, counter ISIL uh, coalition. And uh, I also recently met with uh, Prime Minister al Baadi and with uh, the Iraqi foreign uh, minister. So we are in close dialogue with uh, Iraq and with the international coalition countering uh, ISIL. And they have briefed us on uh, the preparations for the military operation to liberate Mosul. I welcome uh, that operation. Uh, we know it, uh, uh, it's a difficult operation because there are many civilians in, uh, in, in, in Mosul and uh, the international community uh, has to do whatever it can to try to uh, reduce the um, sufferings uh, of civilians as much as uh, possible. Um, I know that the international coalition have provided um, many airstrikes and a lot of air support uh, for the forces which are now on the ground uh, uh, conducting the military operation to liberate uh, Mosul. But I will not comment on specific operational uh, issues uh, because this is uh, uh, not a NATO uh, operation. It's an uh, Iraq-led operation supported by the coalition. NATO supports the coalition. NATO allies are uh, supporting the, uh, the efforts of the Iraqi forces. Uh, and NATO, will also, uh, NATO is also training Iraqi forces. But these are operational issues which I think we should leave to those who are directly responsible for the operation in Mosul. That's all we have time for. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Good to see you. As always. Thank you. And I follow you.